So today's lecture, we'll discuss the two different types of arguments. There are deductive arguments and inductive arguments. And then sometimes when we hear people talk or when we read something, uh, it may look like an argument, may sound like an argument, when it's actually just an explanation. And we'll discuss the difference between the two. So if I tell you something like, Smurfs exist, is that an argument? Well, you have to remember, what is the definition of an argument? The definition of an argument is something that has two components, right? It must have a conclusion and it must have a premise. In other words, it must have some sort of main point that is supported by another claim. So when we take a look at something like Smurfs exist, it's one claim, right? There is nothing given to support the idea that Smurfs exist. There's no other claim to support the claim that somebody's making that Smurfs exist, so not an argument. If I said to you, Smurfs exist because it is obvious that they are real, well, is this an actual argument? Now, what we learned in a previous lecture are, uh, is, is um, the, the notion that sometimes when we speak, there are certain key terms or words that kind of point to conclusions, some key words and terms that point to uh, a premise. And one of those that points to a premise is the word because, right? When people say because such and such is true, that's usually a reason to believe something else. So here, when somebody says Smurfs exist because it is obvious that they are real, it may sound like an argument, but it's not really an argument. Look at that second claim. It is obvious that they are real. That's not a claim that actually gives you a, a reason to believe Smurfs exist, right? That's not uh, some sort of evidence to support the idea Smurfs exist. To say it is obvious that they are real is just saying, hey, it's obvious Smurfs exist. You're just saying the, the initial claim uh, differently, right? So it's not an argument. If I said to you, Smurfs exist, because if they don't exist, we will all die. So again, we have that term because, which kind of uh, makes us feel as if somebody's giving us a reason to believe something. But what's presented to us isn't actually an argument. Think about it. The claim that if they don't exist, we will all die is not evidence to show us that Smurfs exist. It is not any new facts that imply the existence of Smurfs. Instead, what we have is a reason to believe something out of fear, right? Not out of logic. It is a reason to come to a belief about something, but it's not a reason why a belief is true. Now, what I mean by that is you could change this and if you want to say they don't exist, we will, if they don't exist, we will all die, that could be a reason to say, well, then you should believe Smurfs exist. Well, that would be an argument, right? If you want to, you could say you should believe Smurfs exist. Well, why should I believe that? Because if they don't exist, we will all die. Nah, that's a good reason to believe something. But it's a good reason to um, believe that you should believe it. It's not a good reason to prove that the claim is actually true. So in this case, it's not an argument. Okay. Uh, by the way, this is a, a famous fallacy, and when we talk about we'll talk about fallacies later on in our term. Fallacies are mistakes in reasoning. So a lot of us make this sort of mistake all the time, right? To believe something is true, not because there's evidence for it. Uh, because of some sort of emotional reason, some sort of psychological reason, not some sort of logical reason. Okay. If I said, I believe Smurfs exist because I grew up in a family that believe in Smurfs, again, it kind of sounds like an argument, right? Especially when you use the word because. Uh, the, the, the first claim they make is, I believe in Smurfs. I believe Smurfs exist. The second claim they make is, well, I believe that because I grew up in a family that believe in Smurfs. Uh, you have a premise. Well, you have a. Do you have two claims? One seems to support the other, but it really doesn't, right? That second claim, I grew up in a family that believe in Smurfs, isn't evidence supporting the idea that Smurfs exist. 
what the person here is actually doing is just explaining to you where their belief comes from. They're explaining to you how it is that they develop the belief. Uh, they're not actually giving evidence that supports the belief, right? So here what we have is an explanation, an explanation. Um, and later on today in this lecture, we'll talk about the difference between the two and we'll practice trying to identify the difference. But again, saying Smurfs exist is a claim and the next claim doesn't give us evidence uh, or a reason to support the idea that they exist. The second claim in this case is just explain to us why this person or how this person came to that belief. Okay. If I said to you Smurfs exist because something had to inspire the creation of the television series and movie, well, now I have an argument, right? So the conclusion being Smurfs exist, the premise, the reason to believe it being that, you know, something had to inspire the, the television series and movie. Now, this may not be the strongest argument. It may not be the, the best argument in the world. But what we have structurally is an actual argument. The second claim is some sort of reason, evidence, to support the first one. Again, maybe, maybe not the best piece of evidence, but it is actual evidence to support the first one. Some sort of um, uh, fact to point to the possibility that the conclusion is true. Okay? So... This is it. So, two types of arguments, deductive and inductive. Inductive arguments, what we have are arguments where the premises kind of imply the conclusion. The premises are not proving the conclusion is true, they just support the conclusion. So, um, when we take a look at things like science, we do studies, we gain evidence, and then we come to conclusions the evidence doesn't necessarily prove conclusions to be true. They're kind of implying some sort of hypothesis, right? Well, then this might be the case about nature. Uh, inductive arguments. An example. When I throw a cat up in the air, it falls to the earth. When an apple breaks off a tree branch while I'm sleeping underneath, the apple falls and hits my head. Therefore, there must be an invisible force called gravity. What we have here is an inductive argument. Just because cats fall from the air, <laughs> just because apples fall from trees, um, it doesn't necessarily prove gravity exists. There could be lots of reasons why cats fall down, apples fall down. But it kind of implies it. It kind of supports the idea that gravity exists, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be the case that gravity exists because of those first two uh, claims. So this is an example of an inductive argument. Deductive arguments will try to prove that the conclusion is true, right? So the premises, if they're actually true premises, will necessarily make it so that the conclusion has to be true. That there's no way that the conclusion is not true given that they're not lying to us about the reasons to believe it. So when we, um, if you've ever seen a, a Sherlock Holmes movie, they, they, they treat Holmes as a master uh, at deductive logic. You know, they, that Holmes is able to gather evidence that points without a shadow of a doubt to who the, the guilty person is. Oftentimes a murderer, right? So let's take a look at an example. The criminal wears size 7 shoes. Only members of the boy band in sync could have committed this crime. Justin Timberlake is the only member with size 7 shoes. Now, if all of those things are true, then it has to be the case that poor Justin Timberlake committed the crime. Right? This is an example of a deductive argument. The premises, if they're true, means that the conclusion has to be true. Okay? Within an inductive argument, the conclusion does not have to be true. With a deductive argument, if the premises, if the reasons people give us are actually true reasons, if they're actually uh, reasons that, that are, are true of reality, then the conclusion has to be true. That's a deductive argument. So um, let's take a look at some examples, and you can try to tell me what you think. Uh, you are much older 
people than Jane, therefore you were born before she was. Now, is somebody trying to prove something is true without a shadow of a doubt, or are they just implying it? Well, the argument is that you are much older than Jane. Well, that's the conclusion. Uh, that's the premise that leads to the conclusion that you were born before she was. But is that does that first premise necessarily mean the second claim is is true? Well, yes, right. You must be born before she was if, in fact, you are older than she is. So deductive argument. If I said you are much older than Jane, therefore you are wiser than she is. Well, in this case. Just because somebody is older doesn't necessarily mean that they're wiser than somebody else. So we say it's an inductive argument, right? The premise, you are much older than Jane, does not prove that you are wiser than she is. Three, you are much older than Jane, therefore you will die before she does. Again, just because one person is older than somebody else doesn't necessarily mean they will die first, right? So the conclusion here, you will die before she does, isn't proven by the claim that you are older than Jane. It may support it, right? It may hint at it, and it may be a reason to believe it, but it doesn't prove it. So inductive argument. Okay, so when we take a look at deductive and inductive arguments, we have specific terms we use to describe the quality of the argument, how good the argument is. So when looking at deductive arguments, we use terms like valid and sound, and we'll describe what those are in a second. When looking at inductive arguments, we use terms like weaker or stronger. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what these terms mean. So when we look at a deductive argument, we say that the argument is valid if it's actually a deductive argument, right? We say it's valid if Given the premises are true, the conclusion has to be true. We say it's a valid deductive argument if the premises necessarily lead to the conclusion. <clears throat> if I give you this argument again, you are much older than Jane, therefore you were born before she was, as we mentioned a second ago, it's a deductive argument. So we say it's a valid deductive argument. <coughs> Which means then that all inductive arguments are not valid deductive arguments, right? So the, by calling a, a deductive argument valid, we're just saying, yes, it really is deductive. So how about this one? John is tall enough to ride the roller coaster. You are taller than John. Therefore, you are tall enough to ride the roller coaster. Well, that, that seems to be a deductive argument. It actually seems to be a deductive one, right? If John is tall enough to ride the roller coaster, and if you are actually taller than John, then it has to be the case <coughs> that you are tall enough to ride the roller coaster. So we say it is a valid deductive argument. If I said to you, well, you know, elephants live in Africa. Africa is hot. Britney Spears is hot. Therefore, Britney Spears is an elephant. We don't really have a deductive argument here, right? The premises don't necessarily <coughs> lead to proof that the conclusion is true. Um, so we say, well, this is an invalid deductive argument um, because an argument that somebody's claimed to be deductive actually is not, right? So it's not valid. Okay, now the term sound applies to a deductive argument and it applies when we know that the premises are actually true in addition to the argument being deductive. So as we mentioned a second ago, um, uh, a deductive argument just means, just refers to how the logic works, that given the premises are true, if they're true, then the conclusion has to be true. To say it is sound is to say that, yes, we know the premises are actually true, right? So to say it differently, a sound argument is a valid deductive argument where we know that the premises are given to us, you know, the reasons to believe the conclusion, those are actually true. So this is a much stronger thing to say about an argument than to say that's valid or not, right? So if we take a look at this argument one more time, you are much older than Jane, therefore you were born before she was. We know it's a valid argument because the logic makes it so that if the premises are true, the conclusion is true. 
The question of whether or not it's sound depends on whether or not the premise is actually true. Are you actually older than Jane? Because if you're not, then even though it's a valid argument, it's not a sound one. In this case, if we say, yes, it is true that you are much older than Jane, then we have not just a valid argument, we have a sound argument, right? If I said to you, you are much older than Jane is not a true statement, somebody lied to us about ages, then even though the argument is valid, meaning the logic works, because the first premise is a lie, then we do not have a sound argument. Meaning that it's not necessarily true you were born before she was, because we don't actually know her age. Right? Or we, 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 we don't uh, actually, it's not actually true that you are older than Jane. Okay, so um, let me say this differently just to try to uh, give you another chance to understand the difference. So valid refers to uh, a, a way of labeling an argument as actually being deductive. Saying the argument is sound means that not only is the argument deductive, but we know everything about it is actually true. The premises actually are true, which means the conclusion is actually true. So, you are much older than Jane, therefore you were born before she was, argument. Just by looking at how the premises and conclusion work, premise necessarily leads to conclusion, Therefore, it's a valid deductive argument. Now, the most important question is, well, is the, are the premises actually true? If you say, if you figure out, that, yeah, it is true that you're much older than Jane, well, then you have a deductive argument that is a sound one. If it turns out that the premise is not true, even though the argument is a deductive one, well, we can't, um, we, we can't believe in the conclusion. So it's not a sound argument. It may take a second or a couple of viewings to get the difference between valid and sound, but, um, but if you keep pursuing, I'm sure you'll get there. So some key ideas about valid and sound uh, deductive arguments. A valid argument may not prove the conclusion, though it tries to, right? Because the premises might not be true. An argument is valid even if the premise is false. To prove the conclusion, to make it so that we know for sure the conclusion is true, the premise of the valid argument must be true. All those things we said about the murder scene, uh, JT is the only one with size 7 shoes, the murderer had to have size 7 shoes, uh, the murderer has to be a member of the boy band of sink, right? If all those claims are true, then it is necessarily true that JT was the murderer, you have a sound argument. Without knowing that the premises are true, they still point to the conclusion having to be true. It's a deductive argument, it's a valid one, but we don't necessarily know it's sound until we know that we're not being lied to or misled by the premises. So, when we take a look at inductive arguments, we talk about whether they're weaker or stronger than another one, right? So remember, an inductive, arguments, an inductive argument doesn't necessarily prove a conclusion to be true. They just support the conclusion. They just kind of uh, provide evidence that infer it to be true. So if I say you are older than Jane, so you will die before Jane does, well, being older doesn't guarantee you're going to die before somebody else. So not deductive, it is inductive. If I give you these two arguments, you are 80 years older than Jane, therefore you will die before she does, and you are 12 months older than Jane, therefore you will die before she does. These are both inductive arguments, right? Just because one person's 80 years older than somebody else doesn't prove that they will die before somebody else. But that is a much stronger argument than saying, hey, you're a couple months older than Jane, therefore you will die before she does. Right, so we say that first argument is, this first argument here, is a stronger argument than this one. This is a weaker argument than this. So the way we look at these 
is, is the more likely a premise makes the conclusion, the stronger the argument. So if you have reasons to believe something, the more likely something is to be uh, true because of the premises, the stronger the argument. Okay. So let's go ahead and practice this. Um, take a look at your textbook at exercise 2-4 and try to identify whether an argument is inductive or deductive um, on numbers 2 through 9. And then uh, figure that out and then come back to the video and then check your answers. Hopefully you've paused the video and done the exercises. Uh, number two is inductive, three is deductive, four is inductive, five is deductive, six is inductive, seven is inductive, eight is deductive, nine is inductive. If you had any issues with any of these, review them again, go back, watch this last uh, section of the lecture, and maybe you can start to develop an intuitive sense for the difference between inductive and deductive arguments. So here is a, a quick uh, diagram um, summarizing the difference between inductive and deductive arguments. Uh, but remember that sometimes what people say or what you read sounds like an argument but isn't. It could very well just be an explanation for something. So an explanation is not an argument, though it may sound like one. An explanation could just be somebody giving you the cause of something. Uh, the TV is not working because the, the remote control um, is busted. I'm not making an argument. I'm just explaining why the TV is not working, right? It's an explanation. An explanation could also just be describing how something works. Um, you ride a bike by sitting on it and pedaling. Well, I'm not making an argument for why you should ride a bike. I'm not making an argument for uh, why you should believe something about a bike. I'm just explaining to you how riding a bike works. Explanation. In other words, an explanation does not address whether a claim is true or false. It's just trying to give you more information, trying to give you a better sense of how something works, uh, of what is the cause of something, but it's not trying to prove something to you per se. So if I say to you, her favorite color is yellow because it is the color of the sun, am I trying to explain something to you or prove something to you? Her favorite color is yellow because it is the color of the sun. Well, in this case, I'm not trying to prove to you her favorite color is yellow by saying it is the color of the sun, right? In this case, it sounds much more like an explanation why her favorite color is yellow. Now think about it. If somebody says to you, her favorite color is yellow, and you want proof of that, well, what would be a reason to believe her favorite color is yellow? Well, I asked her, and she said her favorite color is yellow. That's a premise to believe a conclusion. Well, because I looked at her closet and she has lots of yellow clothes. Evidence to support the idea that her favorite color is yellow. I talked to her mom and her mom said she really likes yellow. That's evidence to believe that her favorite color is yellow. But if I say her favorite color is yellow because it is the color of the sun, that's much more of me trying to explain to you where, her, where she got to um, the point where she really likes yellow, right? So this is an explanation. So really what you are doing is you're trying to interpret the intent of the speaker. Is the speaker trying to explain something to me or are they trying to prove to me something is true and providing reasons to believe it? In this case, it's much more of an explanation. Now, you can slightly change this claim, the statement, in a way that you actually have an argument. So, I mean, you could say something like, um, her favorite color is yellow. Well, how do I know? Because I know she likes the color of the sun. Right now, the way that that second claim is phrased, I know she likes the color yellow. Uh, I know she likes the color of the sun. That's phrased in a way that makes it sound as if they're trying to prove to you how it is that they came to believe her favorite color is yellow. 
right? My evidence for believing her favorite color is yellow is the fact that I know she likes the color of the sun. This is an argument. So it can be kind of confusing, right? When you're talking to people or when you're reading something to determine, hey, are they trying to prove something to me or are they just trying to explain to me something? So let's take a look at a few of these and see if you can identify whether or not there are explanations or arguments. SpongeBob is my favorite cartoon character because he has lots of personality. Am I explaining to you something? Or am I trying to give you a reason to believe something is true? An argument. In this case, I'm just explaining to you why it is I like SpongeBob. Right? I'm not trying to prove to you that it's true. If I wanted to prove to you it's true, I would just say, uh, I'm telling you right now, right? That's proof that I like SpongeBob. Or uh, you can take a look at somebody's notebook and see lots of SpongeBob stickers. Well, that's kind of evidence to show that they like SpongeBob. Um, every time you talk to a person, they're always talking about SpongeBob. Right? That's evidence to show that SpongeBob is somebody's favorite character. But to say he has lots of personality isn't really evidence to believe SpongeBob is somebody's favorite character. It's a uh, explanation for why somebody likes SpongeBob. If somebody says she combs her hair that way because it flatters her face, is this an explanation or an argument? She combs her hair that way because it flatters her face. This sounds like they're just trying to explain to us why she combs her hair that way. They're not trying to prove it to us, right? So if, um, if somebody combs their hair back um, and you wanted proof of that, well, proof would be, yeah, I saw them the other day. She combed her hair back. Uh, I saw a picture. In the picture, she combed her hair back. I talked to her husband. Her husband said she usually likes to comb her back, hair back. Right? Those are reasons to believe she combs her hair back. To say that she combs her hair that way because it flatters her face just explains why she might be doing that. Right? So it, it's an explanation. Okay. If I say to you there is a fire in there because there is smoke out here, am I giving you an argument or am I trying to explain something? Am I trying to prove to you something is true or am I trying to give you more information or trying to give you a description of how something works? There is a fire in there. So imagine you are in your bedroom. Uh, no, let's imagine you're in your living room and then you say there's a fire in there. You point to your uh, closet. There's a fire in there because there is smoke out here. Am I trying to explain to you something, how something is, or am I trying to give you evidence to believe something? Let's take a look again. There is a fire in there. Well, do they give us a reason to believe there's a fire in there? Yeah, they do. The reason is that they see smoke in the living room, right? They see smoke out here. So we have a premise. We have evidence. Well, there's smoke out here to believe the conclusion that there's a fire in that closet. So it's an argument, right? It's an argument. However, if I say to you, there is smoke out here because there is a fire in there, think about how that sentence is structured. There's a smoke out here. If that's their claim, are they proving it by saying there's a fire in there? If they're saying there's a smoke out here, they don't need to prove it. I mean, they're there. They see the smoke. You're there. You see the smoke, right? There's smoke out here. It, it, you don't need to prove it. And saying that there's a fire over there doesn't prove to you there's smoke out here, right? So we're just explaining why the smoke is here. The person is just explaining where the smoke comes from. They're not giving evidence to believe that there's smoke out here because if you're out here, you see the smoke. That doesn't need to be proven. But what's needed is to maybe explain where it comes from. So to say there's smoke out here because there's a fire in there is just explaining where the smoke comes from. Okay, so an explanation. Let's practice this uh, and check out exercise 2-9 in your textbook. And let's do numbers 1 through 5. Try to indicate whether what's in front of you is an argument or an explanation. Pause the video. Do the exercises. Come back. Hopefully you've had a second to try the exercises. Uh, number one is an explanation. Number two is an explanation. Number three is an argument. 
Number four is an explanation. And number five is an argument. If you're having trouble figuring out what's an explanation, what's an argument, yeah, that's okay. You might want to watch the video again, at least this last section, and we'll start to slowly develop the uh, intuition of determining whether something is an explanation or an argument. Okay. When we come back in our next lecture, we'll talk about how sometimes people give an argument and there are some premises that are kind of taken for granted. They're kind of just obvious, so they don't really say them. Those are unstated premises. So we'll look at those in our next section.